Hello and welcome to part three of the ZPy tutorial series. Again, my name is Hugo. I'm one of the co-founders at Zuma Labs and this is a tutorial on how to generate synthetic training data for computer vision models. In this tutorial, we're going to continue the project that we've been working on in the previous two tutorials and we're going to be adding material jittering uh, HDRI backgrounds and also HSV randomizations. All right, so let's switch over here to Blender. Uh, this is Blender. If you guys remember, this is the scene with our monkey, uh, also known as Suzanne in the Blender community. And this is the script that we have been using. This is the part two script, and we are now going to modify this for part three. If you do not have these scripts, feel free to check the uh, video description and the code will be provided there. Okay, so the first part of this that we want to now add is the ability to jitter uh, the material. So this Suzanne has some material, right? You can always go to the shading tab here and you can see the material. Uh, this is right now a very simple material. All it is is basically uh, a principal BSDF node that's feeding out into a material output node. Um, and you can change properties of this material, such as the base color. We can make the monkey blue or green or uh, pink or whatever you want. But we want to jitter that, right? In computer vision, especially with deep learning, it's very important to have a variety of uh, objects in your training data. You want to encompass the variety that you're going to encounter in the real world. So luckily, this is relatively simple with uh, ZPy. All we have to do here is add some code here. Let's put it right here. ZPy.material.jitter. So a simple call that allows us to jitter. And we want to say what materials do we want to jitter. We want to jitter the material on objects Suzanne dot active material. So what this will do is it'll go ahead and jitter the active material on the Suzanne object. All right. And we can, what we can actually do is we can copy paste that. We can just run that and we do import zpy here on the console. We can paste that there and we can actually see what this does. So when we jitter that, let's go up here and look at the actual final material we see that we're changing three properties, the reflectiveness, the uh, roughness, and so on. Okay, so now that we've jittered the material, we are going to actually change the texture of the underlying material, just so it's not the same orange color with a variety of different roughness and specular highlights and stuff like that. We actually wanna change the underlying texture. So. I've gone ahead and I've downloaded some random texture images from the internet. These are just pictures. You can really use any picture that you want. And you wanna kind of pick things that are a little bit odd and kind of all over the place, right? This is domain randomization. You wanna have a wide variety of images to change the appearance of this Suzanne. So first thing we're gonna do is find the location of that. So the way that I stored this, I just put this in a folder called textures that's right next to this Blender file. This Blender file is called part three. Oh, don't open it twice. So we're going to go ahead and in our script say the path, bpy.data.filepath, uh, dot parent. So that's the directory of the folder, or basically the folder that this file is in. So this is, that's the asset dir. We're gonna go ahead and import from pathlib import path. There is some controversy as to whether this Python path library is actually better than the OS path library, but I like it, so let's go ahead and use it. And let's go ahead and say texture paths equals and we're going to go through these names. So we're going to say asset dir, and then we're going to say inside that asset dir, right? If there's a texture folder, and then inside that texture folder, there's a file called 007. 
So inside that, we're going to say textures. And then we're going to say 007.jpg. So that is the list. Basically, we're keeping a list of all the paths to these textures. And I'm going to go ahead and cheat and copy the paths that I had in my other file here. And there you go. Now we have a list, a Python list of all the different textures in that folder. Now, what we can do is go to here where we jitter the material. And before we jitter the material, let's actually load the material. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a random material. So we're going to say random.choice and then texture paths. So that is going to pick a random one of these texture paths. Let's go ahead and import random up here. So we have random.choice. So once we have that uh, random texture path, we're going to create a new material from it. So we're going to say cpy.material.make mapped from texture, texture path. So it's going to create a new material from that texture. And we're going to go ahead and say zpy.material.setMat Suzanne new mat. So we created a, a, a material from that texture path, or we picked one of the texture paths at random. We created a new material, and we set it as the material for the Suzanne object. Um, one extra thing you have to do here, which we will eventually clean up, is that when you change the material of an object, you kind of lose all the properties of that material, including the segmentation properties. So we're actually going to have to go ahead and resegment this object uh, with the segmentation color from above. All right, and there we have it. This is how we randomize the material. OK. Randomize the material. All right, so that's all fine and dandy. But there's one other thing that is important, too, if we're trying to uh, change things. And that's, that's the world, right? So the world is what's around the monkey. It's this background, right? And right now, there is none of that, right? Our monkey is sitting in the infinite grid of, of the metaverse, and it doesn't have, uh, there's no randomization of background, right? And you, you want to be able for your deep learning model to identify this monkey. You want it to be able to see that monkey uh, on a variety of backgrounds. So kind of the same way that we made a list of random textures, we're going to make a list of random HDRIs. So HDRI paths. And as I said, as I did before, I actually went ahead and downloaded a couple different HDRIs. Uh, check the video description for a website that has a ton of free HDRIs that you can use for your purposes. Uh, HDRIs are basically like a 360 image sphere kind of thing that also has a little bit of lighting too. So it's, they're very, very good for random backgrounds in synthetic data. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and copy these from the previous one here. There we go. And now we have a list of HDRI paths. So the same way that we picked a random texture and then applied that random texture to the monkey object, we are going to do the same thing. We are going to basically do something very similar for the background, randomize the background. And here we're going to say random or zpy dot blender dot load HDRI. And we are going to say random dot choice HDRI paths. All right, so we're going to 
basically randomly pick one of these HDRIs and load it as the background. Okay, so now we have jittered the material after picking a random texture, and we have also randomized the background. One last thing we're gonna be doing in this video is jittering the HSV, right? So HSV stands for hue, saturation, and value. Um, basically, it's a different way to think about colors, right? So if we go here, back to this view, back to the object, and for example, click on this base color. RGB is your standard kind of RGB color wheel here where every point on this color wheel is represented by some value R, some value G, some value B. HSV is another way to represent that, but the H in here stands for hue, which is kind of like color. Saturation is also kind of like color. So you see we move around in the color wheel here, we get different values of H and S, but that V stays constant. And then if we change the V, which is the value, you can see how going closer to zero makes it black and going closer to one makes it white. So it's basically a different color space for uh, to represent RGB. And one way to kind of augment a data set is to basically mess with the H and the S and the V values. So whenever you actually render an image here, uh, Here's the line where we render our color images, our instant segmentation, and our depth images. Um, we're actually going to split this. So we don't want to change the HSV for the depth image and the instant segmentation image. We only want to change it for the color image. So we're going to go ahead and separate that. So there's going to be two separate calls here. And in the first call, we are going to pass an HSV value. And this HSV value is going to be a tuple. And in that tuple, we're going to pick uh, a random HSV. So random dot uniform. And I don't know, let's say 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. to say 0 0.1 and 0 0.9, huge variety here. 0 0.9, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. Okay, so what we've done effectively for this now is for the color image, right? Whenever we render the color image, we are going to be changing the HSV value of the final image. And this will result in an addition, some additional uh, variety in the visual appearance of the images. Okay, and that is the three additions that we're gonna be making in this video. So let's go ahead and um, run this. Okay, so we went ahead and actually added some comments and generally cleaned up the code a little bit, but it should be the same code if you've been following along. If not, you can feel free to go ahead and copy paste the code or use the code in the video description. So now to run this scene, the first thing we're gonna do here is in the output path here, let's open that folder. There's already some stuff in there, so let's actually go ahead and clean it. So if we hit the clean button, the output folder should be empty. Um, if you want to change where the uh, where you're going to output your data to, you can always change this folder. And of course, we want to have this window open. This is the window toggle system console. Basically, this is the terminal that's going to give us all the good output we need. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. It seems a little, a little unnecessarily large there. And let's go ahead and click this run button. So we hit that run button and we go, boom. So you see, simulation step zero of 10. And it's gonna go ahead, simulation step one of 10, two of 10, three of 10. So this is going ahead and it's generating uh, 10 images. And in between each step, it's going to jitter the material, uh, put a new texture, put a new background, and jitter the hue, saturation, and value. Okay, so I think that finished. Yeah, nine of 10 and then it got to the end.
Okay, so it got to the end. We can go back to our thing and hit this open. And there we go. Look at that. Here are our images. So this is a kind of purpley, grainy Suzanne in front of some train tracks. We have this, this wood texture Suzanne in front of what appears to be some kind of British manor or something like that. Um, and here's a kind of more matte black Suzanne in front of uh, kind of like an outdoor palace. And if we go into the Zumo Meta, we actually can go ahead and see the annotated versions of these images. And yep, these definitely look like the bounding boxes are correct and the segmentations are correct as well. So let's switch back to the out. That is the tutorial, guys. Um, stay tuned. If you've made it this far, we are going to keep pushing more videos in this tutorial series. Please give us feedback. Are these too long? Are these too short? Am I going too quick? Um, whatever you guys need, uh, I'm here for you. Uh, thank you and talk to you later.